first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine out, Jerusalem, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising on you. Though night sea covers the earth and darkness the peoples. Above you the Lord now rises, and above you his glory appears. The nations come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Lift up your eyes and look around. All are assembling and coming towards you. Your sons from far away and daughters being tenderly carried. At this sight, you will grow radiant, your heart troubling and full, since the riches of the sea will flow to you, the wealth of the nations come to you. Camels in drums will cover you, and dromedaries of Median and Epha. Everyone in Sheba will come, bringing gold and incense, and singing the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. To God. Our response is, all nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son, your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. In this day, justice shall flourish and peace till the moon fails. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the great rivers to earth's bounds. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. The kings of Tashish and the sea coast shall pay him tribute. The king of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him, all kings shall fall prostrate. All nations shall serve him. All nations shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. For he shall save the poor when they cry, and the needy who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and serve the lives of of the poor. All nations. Second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. You have probably heard how I have been entrusted by God with the grace he meant for you and that it was by a revelation that I was given the knowledge of the mystery. This mystery that has now been revealed through the scripture, through the spirit to his holy apostles and prophet was unknown to any man in past generations. It means that pagans now share the same inheritance, that they are part of the same body, and that the same promise has been made to them in Christ Jesus through the gospel, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do the Lord homage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord. After Jesus had been born at Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod, some wise men came to Jerusalem from the east. Where is the infant king of the Jews? They asked. We saw his star as it rose and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was perturbed 
and so was the whole of Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people and inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they told him, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you will come a leader who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men to see him privately. He asked them the exact date on which the star had appeared and sent them on to Bethlehem. Go and find out all about the child, he said, and when you have found him, let me know, so that I too may go and do him homage. Having listened to what the king had to say, they set out, and there in front of them was the star they had seen rising. It went forward and halted over the place where the child was. The sight of the star filled them with delight, and going into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and falling to their knees, they did him homage. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. But they were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod and returned to their own country by a different way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the word epiphany comes from the Greek noun epiphania, which means shining forth, manifestation, or revelation. In the ancient Greek Roman world, an epiphany referred to the appearance of one of the gods to mortals. And since Hellenistic kings and Roman emperors were considered by many to be gods, the word epiphany was also used as a term for divine majesty, that is, a king's solemn visit to his people where he manifests himself, he, himself to, uh, for all to, to see. Because during that epoch, uh, kings don't, didn't normally come out uh, randomly. Their coming out was heralded and the term epiphany was used to qualify that solemn appearance of kings or the appearance of gods to uh, mortal human beings. Now, it is in the context of this Greek Roman usage that we shall understand our celebration of today. Christ at birth was only known to a few, like the shepherds and neighbors. The Epiphany was the occasion to make him manifest to the whole world by the Magi. Their visit alerted the authorities in Jerusalem that somebody of consequential type has been born. Yes, the Jews had it written in their scripture that the Messiah will be born. Yes, the scripture even gave the precise time in which the Messiah will be born. But no one was paying attention to the imminent fulfillment of that scriptural prediction until the Magi came calling. It was only then that they researched their scripture and pinpointed the exact location of the newborn, the newborn child. With this, Jesus became publicly manifest to everybody. His birth became a public knowledge. Now, the real identity of 
the Magi has been a subject of scholarly discussion and various traditions have tried to identify them accordingly. One of those traditions is a 14th century Armenian tradition that identifies them as Balthazar of Arabia, some add King of Arabia, then Melchior of Persia, and Gaspar of India. But there are also some other traditions that identify the Magi with a hereditary priesthood of the Medes. Medes are known today as the Kurds credited with profound and extraordinary religious knowledge. They were, said, they were said to have been experts in the interpretation of dreams. And it is in this role of interpreting dreams that the biblical Daniel was not only associated with the Magi, but also given the title Rag Mag, which means Chief of the Magi. Darius the Great of the Persian Empire was said to have vested the Magi with both political and religious authority so that they became the supreme priestly caste of the empire, charged with the appointment and anointing of kings, kings throughout the empire. Now, this tradition identifies the Magi that visited Jesus as a group of kingmakers who entered Jerusalem in the later days of the reign of Herod. If this tradition is to be believed, then it could explain, somehow explain Herod's fears and subsequent reactions. Because having already secured the title King of the Jews from Augustus Caesar, it must have been unsettling for him to hear from the Magi that another King of the Jews has been born. So it could explain the reaction, uh, the reaction that he had and why the Bible said that he was distressed. There are many more other traditions surrounding the identity of the Magi which we can't delve into here. However, and this is important, our interest should not focus on the historical identity of the Magi. This should be the concern of historians. Whatever tradition associated with their identity, the visit of the Magi has become an important part of Christmas narrative. The aim of the visit is not so much to draw attention to the visitors, that is the Magi, as to direct focus on the person visited, in this case, the infant Jesus. Whatever was their real reason, whatever was the real reason for their visit, the Magi revealed to the whole world that a child has been born who was to become great and influential. Their gifts were as symbolic as their visit was revealing. The gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh were prophetic, speaking of our Lord's offices of king, priest, and savior. Gold speaks of his kingship. Frankincense was the spice used in priestly duties. And myrrh was an embalming ointment anticipating Jesus' death as a savior. Perhaps a very important point of meditation for us as Christians is on the statement credited to the Magi in the Gospel of today concerning the infant Jesus. We are told that they came looking for the infant king of the Jews because according to them, and I'm just quoting what we read in the Gospel, 
we saw his star as it rose. We have come to visit the infant king of the Jews because we saw his star as it rose. What does this statement say to us as Christians? We saw his star as it rose. What does it say to us as Christians? The first insight we must get from it is that as Christians, it is not enough to be baptized. We must become manifest by letting our stars to arise and shine. And this is exactly what the prophet Isaiah proposes in the first reading. When he enjoined us to arise and shine out, for your light has come. And we don't become manifest by shouting on top of our voices that we are Christians or that we are believers or prophets or elders, etc., etc., or by claiming to work miracles as many do today. That's not how to become manifest. Remember, Jesus was still an infant when his star arose and shone. Therefore, we assume that he had not yet even learned how to speak by then, and therefore couldn't have blown his own trumpet. We become manifest not by what we say, but by who we are. That is how we become manifest. Not by what we say, but by who we really are, by what we do, and by how we comport ourselves. That's how we become manifest. We have billions of Christians the world over, but relatively, very few whose stars are shining and we must ask ourselves questions it is precisely because our stars no longer shine, um, uh, no longer shine that we no longer make any impact in the world even with our preaching no one preached to the major i remember they were identified as pagans. No one preached to them. They didn't need any preaching to notice that someone's star was shining so brightly that they had to follow it and do homage to whoever owned that star. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the world is in darkness, and the only way to illuminate is by letting our stars shine so brightly that even non-believers will be compelled to look for those who own the stars. In this way, without saying much, we shall have influenced and impacted a lot. Now, make no mistakes about it. The decision to allow your star to shine is yours to take. No one can do that for you. But, until we allow our stars to shine, we might just remain nominal Christians only. And this, just by virtue of our baptism. But do you know one thing? Our world is not in need of nominal Christians. It is rather in need of real Christians whose stars are shining brightly. Let us therefore strive to be counted among the real Christians who daily illumine the world with brightly shining stars to dispel the darkness of the world. The Lord be with you. Amen.